right guys so today's video we're going to talk about what type of cutting do we do we're not a clear cut crew obviously we're primarily a first thin and second thin we're going to, i'm going to show y'all first thin and in another video i'll show y'all second thin i'm going to describe to y'all you know kind of step y'all through everything kind of show you the machines working through it and uh y'all gonna learn what first thinning is thinning uh well we do a lot of second thinning too but we are 100 percent a thinning crew the only time we'll ever see clear cut is if there's some kind of an emergency uh, or we're cleaning up some storm damage stuff something like that 90 I, i'm gonna say 99.9 percent .9 just to include that one tenth of a percent chance that we do do something a little bit different but 99.9 percent .9 of our work that we do is based off of what's called a fifth row thin whether it's first thin or second thin the, the second thin I'll, I'll do another video on it and get more details on it but this one we're going to be describing what we're doing here why we're doing it uh, what's the benefits of it such as that We're gonna watch the machines work as we're as we're doing it. So, got a new guy helping out today on the skidder. Mike had to be off for a couple days. Gonna watch the John Deere come by, the new John Deere skidder. Watch it come by. Got a nice drag of wood. You see my rubber tire sitting over there. I've been running it all morning. We are. Uh, getting cut ahead We've got Matt on the other loader up there I'm actually fixed to go get on it I've got everything that's on this side cut down road ahead to well where my cutter is sitting at right there from there all the way back down here to the end of that access I got every bit of that cut ahead of the skitter and the track cutter and Brady has from where he's at this row this row and I think there's some wood on the road that my uh, cutter is sitting on over there. He's ahead. So anyway We're gonna go walk over here. We're gonna let Brady get back to cutting for a second And then I'm gonna explain to y'all what uh, I'm gonna explain to y'all first thinning All right, so some basics really quickly here just kind of touch on everything get make sure everybody understands what's going on here This stuff was planted this stuff here is like 14 years old they clear cut it they come in with some big old dozers and they they level the side up and those big dozers also have some big old plows behind them and they're pulling these ro the, the ground up in beds kind of like a cornfield or something like that you garden that you would plant at home you don't just plant a flat garden you kind of hump your where you're going to be planting you hump that up for the most part in south louisiana everything's bedded down here because the ground is so flat they're doing that to get the trees up out of the ground. So it's clear cut, it's site prepped, it's planted, it stands depending on where you're at, uh, the ground, you know, where it's actually located. It can come online at 12 years of age to be cut most of the time. The other part of the time, it doesn't get cut at 12 because it's in a wet location. Uh, it has poor access as in roads to get to it such as that it may stand i've cut i mean we've got some first thinning uh that we've got started that's 23 years old right now i've cut first thinning as old as 33 years of age uh, you don't want to let it stand that long you to me personally prime cutting this right here is 14 years old this needs to be cut now it, it isn't dying off or anything yet uh if you would leave this another two years these little bit smaller trees that you see in there there are a few of the really tiny trees 
that are starting to die off but for the most part this stand it, there's one right here y'all can see that that dead tree right there the it, it's dying off because this stuff if you don't cut it it will self thin itself and you're losing money because that tree costs you know dollars to put it in the ground and then you got all this fertilize and everything else over the years uh, and if you burn it you know you got all this management in it and then if you let it die you lost money so you need to get in here between in my personal opinion most stands need to stand to 14 to 16 years of age that seems to be where you make the most volume off of a thinning and you're not losing timber uh, when you go to letting it stand past most especially past 16 years like i said you start losing a lot of a little bit smaller stuff uh, the stuff that you should be taking during a first thin, you lose that, um, and then that's just money thrown away. We do what's called a fifth row thin, meaning there will be four rows. One, count y'all here. One, two, three, and that fork of tree right there, that's four. There's four rows left in the middle. So if you was cutting these down rows here, you'd start right here. All right, you just finished that row. You go one, two, three, four, and you would cut the fifth row. That's why it's called a fifth row thin. If this was a third row thin, you would you would leave this row that you just got done right here and go one, two, count the third row. That's a very popular, and you only have two rows left in the middle. That's a very popular method to thin up north, uh, Louisiana, Arkansas, Mississippi, uh, most especially places where they don't do a lot of actual selecting out uh, the out of the middles the middle middle is the timber that is left in between the two you got a row here and you got a row here this is the the timber that's left in the middle the middle of the two rows that's why it's we call them middles uh your timber is planted most everywhere nowadays in my area on 10 foot centers so from this row here to this row here should be 10 feet feet and then you take one row out that gives you two 10 foot centers so you have 20 feet of access to be pulling your timber down we'll let the cutter go back to cutting and we'll uh i'll, I'll give y'all a better idea on the the rows and stuff so where the skitter is at right there that is what you call your access your actual down rows are planted this way and this way, y'all see where the cutter's sitting at. So to access these rows, you want to go as square across them, and it, there's a hundred different scenarios uh, that that happen. But for the most part, you want to go straight across them. That way, you got wood. Either all your wood, if you if over there is where your road is, say, if over yonder is your road. You won't put your access by your road because your set's going to be over there. So all your wood goes to your road and then to your access to your loader. Like here, we're in the back and kind of in a pocket. So I split the middle here and we've got some rows coming to our access from here. Some rows coming to here from there. And then everything goes straight. Y'all see how it's a long straight shot up through there. It goes up there to your, to your loader. So this is your access point. Your access points are allowed to be 25 feet from the edge of the tree to the edge of the tree. They'll let you kind of skim away sometimes with 30 feet, but they really don't like to see it. And anywhere you can keep it at 20 feet, they like that better. So something you gotta watch for whenever you're working bedded timber, and that's what Brady's doing right now, see how this stump right here is really tall you see how it's grinding on I don't think y'all could have saw that but that would have been really good to get on camera those stumps they start the dirt starts getting drug out from beside them and they go to growing so to prevent damage to the tires and the tracks and everything else we have to keep bobbing these stumps off So I worked around that pile of wood. You want to try and keep your tracks off the wood as much as possible, especially when it's dry, because it has a bad tendency to break your wood up. 
So you try and stay off of it as best as you can. So the way we work this, and y'all won't get to see that process, you see how the row is already cut out for the track cutter. Got this one over here, the skidder's got the down row wood off of. This one over here, they ain't touched yet. This is a, well, a raw row, as I would call it. But the skid, the track, the, excuse me, the rubber tire cutter will come down here and cut the down row when it's dry. This is a when it's dry scenario. I'm not gonna get into the when it's wet scenario because that's a whole other ball game. But the rubber tire operator will come down here and cut his down rows ahead of the track cutter. A skidder will follow the rubber tire around, cutting or picking up what the rubber tire has cut. Then when these rows get clean, the track cutter follows because his boom goes in and out of these rows because you know we're doing a fifth row thin here so you're gonna have two rows you have one two rows that you have to thin going in and then you have two rows on the other side to thin coming back out and that boom goes in and out a lot faster of those middles than you can drive most especially over these beds way faster than you can drive a rubber tire cutter in and out and it can also get in a lot tighter situation. You saw how that head just tucked up real nice and tight on that machine? You can get in a lot tighter position and do less damage to the trees and do a better tree selection process with the track cutter. So we do our down rows first with the rubber tire, and then we come down here and thin with the track cutter. Unless we don't have the rubber tire going then the track cutter will down row it and thin his left side going in and then thin his right side coming out. Some people will say, well, why don't you go to the back and do both sides coming out where you're not tracking on the wood? You can do that. It takes a very skilled operator to do that. And even with a skilled operator, it is not the fastest way to operate a track machine in first thinning. Second thinning, you can make a slight exception to the rule, but not all the time. So another good reason why we do one process at a time, like we'll work the down rows, and then we'll, once the skidder goes to getting a few down rows ahead of the track cutter, he'll mix a little bit of down row wood, because this is down row wood, you'll see how it's a little bit bigger, cleaner, straighter. It's definitely not gonna have as many forks and whippy trees in it as what you would normally have, because it's down row wood. It's the, it's the better wood off of the track. You're essentially cutting, you're clear cutting every fifth row off of the track. So yeah, you're gonna get some bad in there, but for the most part, you're gonna get all of the, I mean, there's gonna be a lot of good wood out of your down rows, normally. Uh, so that gives your loader man a little bit of a break where he's not always stuck just on straight good wood or always bad wood. If he's always stuck on good wood, you're gonna eventually get all your good wood cut and then you're gonna have to thin everything and you're gonna have nothing but trash to work with and it's gonna make your day so long. Uh, so that's why we work the process like we work it here. It's, it kind of evens the workload over, even if Brady gets on the rubber tire cutter and does his own down rowing and then comes back later and does his own thinning with the track cutter, even though he's cut everything, he spread his workload out and it makes his day easier. Same thing with the skidding. The y'all can see here the, the rubber tire cutter, the down row wood is just it's cleaner because it's down row wood. You're not having to reach in this middle and work around all this brush and stuff, that rubber tire can get here and just nose its way back and forth and get good clean piles like this. Even if he was thinning, the rubber tire was thinning, he's not gonna get good at clean piles like this. Uh, so it makes less stops for the skidder operator. Uh, you know, most time all your piles are on this side over here. So it makes uh, a lot easier situation for just everybody all around. So now that you understand that we're doing a fifth row thin, there's, like I said, there's other variations of thins, but what we do 99% of the time is a fifth row thin. 
Same thing when we do second thinning, it's still a fifth row thin. You understand we're stripping the one strip out. We're leaving four tree rows. We're taking two tree rows off one side of the row, bringing it into the, the access row, the down row. These are, this is what we call down rows. Uh, your down rows are the tree rows that are planted. Your access road is the road that are the, the access point that you cut across your down rows to access all of your timber. It's shortest, most efficient route back to your loader. You always got to make sure and pay attention that you're not making your skidder skid it backwards away from your loader, such as that. But I mean, there's see, there's a whole bunch that goes into this that uh, I'm not going to get to dig too, too deep in. But we pull two tree rows from this side into the down row, two tree rows from this side into the down row. Uh, and, and you're leaving a, we're trying to leave a minimum of like 225 trees per acre. I couldn't tell you what it starts off at. It varies from track to track. Uh, to put it in forestry terms, you're looking for about a 75 basal area. And I've showed y'all before my little prism that you pick up and, and check the trees and you need to count seven and that comes out, you need to count between seven and eight trees every time you take a plot. That gives you a 75 basal area. Uh, sometimes they'll let you go if the stand's a little bit older. They'll let you push it down to like a 60 basal area, which is going to put you at a solid 200 trees per acre. Uh, whenever you second thin, you're going all the way down to about 100 and usually 125 to 150 trees per acre is all that is left by the time you get done second thinning it. Now, although this is a very, I mean, it's not going to be like a, oh my God, good stand, but this is a, an above average first thinning stand because like I said it's 14 years old. Most of the stuff we cut first thinning uh, usually starts off at 12 years old. We don't get to see the better timber until it starts drying up a little bit and we go to get into, a, you know, where you have no roads. The ground is bad wet most of the year. You only have a few months to get in there and get it out. Uh, but whenever you get in here to, you, to your first inning like this, you're, you're looking to pull the smaller, poorly deformed or poorly formed or, or deformed trees such as forks, canarsians, twists, uh, what we call a crow's nest. I don't see anything standing here that has a crow's nest. Uh, you look right here, this tree, it forks like right off the butt pretty much. Uh, you know, like that little whippy tree. You're looking for those three. You got that big fork over there that comes right off the ground. You're, you're looking for that kind of stuff to take out. And you see how this is why the high accumulation heads are extremely important to our operation where even in the second thinning that we normally stay in we don't need this this head but we stay in smaller diameter timber even though this is good first thinning this is still for most people especially from what i see through the facebook groups and stuff most people would throw a fit to cut this stuff because it is so little compared to what they are used to cutting. So that's why we have to have the high accumulation head. As you've seen, he's been cutting now for almost two minutes before he's gonna have to dump that head. There's probably 16 trees or so in that bundle. The more trees you can put in a bundle, the less time you have to spend. You see, it takes time to lay the trees down get spun back around and then get back into your cut. So the more time that you can spend bunching trees, the, the more you're gonna produce at the end of the day. And logging is a production driven industry. It is unlike any other industry you'll ever be around in all your life. Some places like construction companies and pipelines and stuff like that, yeah, they have production goals and stuff. You got hit in the leg with a chip, that thing hurt. But it is nothing like what logging is. I've, I've done everything but be on an oil rig. And, and logging is so 
crazy of how fast paced everything is and so production driven. So we need those little things like that high accumulation head to make our operation more efficient. There's 10 trees, I think, is what I just counted in there. That makes a difference. But you see, whenever he gets done, there's still some poorly deformed trees standing around. Kind of like that forked one right there. I probably would have cut the forked one, but the way he was sitting uh, in the machine and lined up on that tree, he probably never even saw that that's a fork because that fork is turned with his point of view. It's going to make it look uh, just like a bigger tree standing there. But that's okay to leave something like that every once in a while on a first thin because you're going to have to come back and second thin it and you can get the rest of the junk out whenever you second thin. But I mean, that's the basics of it down here in the woods. You're going to you're going to down row it. You're going to thin it. Yeah, he snuck that one tree away. That's that's a little bit of a more of an expert move. He bumped the other tree in behind. It was a little too close to be doing that. He had a good intention with it. I would have probably just cut it all at one time. But I mean, he had a good intention with it. He was trying to leave one of those two trees there. Sometimes you get away with it, sometimes you don't. But you're just coming down here and, and you're, you're just opening up. You're trying to take out the weaker trees that are still standing or that are standing. Um, and just you're just opening it up the canopy. You see, you see how open all this is compared to where we haven't thinned yet? If you open that up, those trees are gonna take off like a rocket ship and start growing and make some fine small logs in about five years, maybe seven years, somewhere in there. It makes a it makes a big difference whenever you open up your, your your canopy like this. So that's about everything that's gonna take place in the woods. We're gonna take y'all up there to the set next and we're gonna show y'all what happens in the, at the at the set, the landing, the ramp, however you would like to word it. We're gonna show y'all what happens up there next once you get it once you get it cut and skid into the loader. Alright, so now it's later in the day obviously but once the wood gets up here to the set we call them sets some people call them landings ramps uh deck it just whatever you want to call it but we call them a set once the wood gets to the set up here most especially on a first thin track we're usually operating uh one loader full time and you see the second loader setting over there i'm going to get on it now we operate it throughout the morning as need be while the two cutters are cutting gets wood cut ahead uh, we use the two skitters as need be and we operate the second loader as need be we only operate four three pieces of equipment full time the loader you see that's delimiting and loading processing and loading however you want to say it then we operate one skitter full time. We operate one cutter full time. And we have a guy that you see him over there doing the truck trimming. That's Matthew. He does most of the truck trimming and he spends most of his time on the second skitter. The second skitter, if the skitters are close to the loaders, spend most of the, his time cleaning and making sure the trash is toted away from the set. When we go to getting on a long drag like what we're on right now, we'll run both skitters and kind of fill the, the set up, fill our access up. You can see some wood over there all headed up. We'll head our wood up like so. And then as Matthew gets... ahead on his piles up there, as soon as they go to get piles headed up, 
either he'll get on that loader or I'll have plenty cut ahead with this rubber tire and then I'll come out and get on the loader. Usually whenever I get on the loader, I'm on the loader till it's time to go home. Matthew kind of flips back and forth. Uh, but we only operate four pieces, uh, three pieces of equipment full time. And we have, if you wanted to actually count them up, count it out, we have four full time employees in the woods. Five if you count me, but I don't count myself because I'm usually busy tending to other stuff such as managing the, the ground out there, making sure all that's going well, uh, dealing with foresters and other bosses and such, uh, whatever visitors we may have come through the job site for the day. Um, I do run a machine quite often, but not as, you know, it's not like I get on a machine in the morning time at six o'clock and I run it till 3, 30, 4 o'clock every day like what I used to. Some days I wish I still done that, but <laughs> uh, so anyway, Once the wood gets here, it goes to either this loader or the other loader. This loader digs all the trash, deliums, uh, or cuts the tops off. You see how the tops on this wood is cut off at a larger diameter? Our tops have to be three inches in diameter, no smaller. Uh, some of it's gonna be bigger, some of it's gonna be smaller, but it gets cut off down here with, with this loader, if this is the only loader running, and then he runs it through his box of chains. It's called a Chambers Deliminator. See it on the back right there. They're from Ackerman, Mississippi. It's one of the best things that's ever been invented to go in the woods for working small plantation pine timber. Um, we've owned several since 1999, I believe, when we bought our first one. It might have been the year 2000 before we bought our first one. Uh, but basically 20 years of using Chambers Deliminators. I don't have any complaints or regrets about ever ever starting to use one uh, when we have the other loader set up over there if the wood is good he will fully delim the wood and top it and then hand it off to the second loader over here if the wood is not really easy to delim like this stuff is it's got a lot of tough limbs on it me or Matt whoever's on that loader over there will just pull it through the pull through real quick real easy then we'll top it at three inches we'll dig all the trash out of the butts and then we'll set it down at this loader over here and the only thing he has to do then is run it through the box of chains you wouldn't think that speeds things up but it is uh, ungodly uh, uh, the volume you gain from doing that little bit right there it's it's crazy it, it really is crazy uh, we used to never set up like that used to which we always used to on dad's job, we still do today. We run two loaders full time on his job. They're either in a set like this working completely together or they're set up independently. One may be in this landing or set and the other one may be down the road in another spot. The only time we do that though is when the wood's good enough you don't have to have a chambers such as a second pin. But the loader setting out in the set is the one that usually had the chambers deliminator set up with it. And that's what delimbed all the wood and handed off to this loader sitting by the road. And all this truck, all this done was either cut the tops out or and or load trucks. Uh, see Matt running a drag in over there. So that's pretty well our process when it comes to a first thin, uh, a fifth row first thin. We're gonna do another video talking about second thins explaining that i thought i mean i i forget this stuff is just common sense to me but to y'all that's never either never seen logging or you've never been around a thinning operation because all the stuff that's on youtube is clear cut operations so this is a completely different niche to what you're used to seeing even even if you was to count logger wade as a thinning job, I mean, he is a, he's a select cut thinning operation, but it's it's hardwoods. That's a whole other game. And then, then, then he's in heels and stuff like that. So it's, it's it's a whole other ball game. You know, it's not I'm not knocking weight or anything. It's just this is different. So I forget that there's a lot of simple things that I forget to explain to y'all. And uh, somebody asked me about this a while back. 
so I figured it'd be a good video to go in detail with and here we are so that's that guys we're gonna go get on the loader and deal them a little bit with Mickey and we will be back in a minute to wrap this video up Watch that chambers. Watch it. Watch it eat them vines. That's a bad mama jama is what that thing is. All right, guys. Go, God. Go subscribe. Follow me if you're not already subscribed. And uh, hit the like button. Leave me a comment, please. Ask any questions. I'm sure I overlooked something trying to cram everything in really fast. The video's probably gonna be a lot longer than what I want it to be, but it's a lot of information to pack into a really short video, so. Anyway, we're done for the day. For first spin in space. We had a hell of a day, a good day. We, uh, we loaded 13, we got one jacked up, so that's 14, and we got almost two loads in the pile. So just say 15 loads is what we done today. I ain't gonna get safe, that's for sure, too, just give it another one. But somewhere in the neighborhood of 15 loads today, we're leaving it our normal leaving time today. Don't feel like we done work the damn, but it, yeah, it turned out pretty good. So, anyway, hope y'all enjoyed today's video. Like I said, go subscribe, leave me a comment, hit that like button. And until the next video, guys, woo, I about fell off this daggum loader. I'll, I'll catch y'all next time. We're out of here.